She was able to walk the way of the cross not because of her courage or endurance, but because of the love of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, yesterday we celebrated the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which cherishes the depth of divine love that Jesus had for us. Today we commemorate the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which reminds us of the love that Mary had for Jesus. He was pierced for the love of us. She was pierced for her love of Him. Prophet Jeremiah in 20 verse 9 says, There is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. Mary can say the same thing. She was so filled with divine love that it became a conflagration of love. It is because of this that St. Bernardine of Siena, the doctor of the heart of Mary, teaches that in Mary's heart are seven burning furnaces, ablaze with seven flames of love. The first reading of today, especially 2 Corinthians 5.14, the love of Christ urges us on, throws more light into the love that Mary had. The love of Christ which fired the furnace of her soul urged her to a selfless, sacrificial, Christ-like love. Her love for Christ was a love that pierced her. It urged her to say yes to God at Annunciation. It compelled her to bear the pains of his passion. Finally, the sword of sorrow opened a wound of love as she saw him stripped, scourged and crucified. She was able to walk the way of the cross not because of her courage or endurance, but because of the love of Christ. As we heard in 2 Corinthians 5.15, no longer did she live for herself, but for him who for our sake died and was raised. The virtue taught by the Immaculate Heart of Mary is the meaning of Christian suffering. Suffering is a reality of human life. Whether you are a believer, atheist or agnostic, there is suffering. For the unbelievers, however, suffering results in loneliness, anxiety in the face of pain. This often meaningless suffering pushes them to despair. But for Mary and the believers, suffering is a matter of love. It's a matter of hope. As St. Paul in Romans 5, 3 to 5 says, not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces hope. And hope does not disappoint, for God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The moral love of Mary's heart urges us to bear all the sufferings for the love of Christ. Job asks from the pages of the Old Testament, why does the innocent suffer? Mary from centuries beyond answers, for the love of Christ compels us. For the Immaculate Heart, even the worst kind of suffering had a meaning. The love for Christ and this love made her suffering a sacrifice. The moment our own sufferings find meaning in our love for Christ, they too become a sacrifice. My dear brothers and sisters, the heart of Mary given over to God is not only a subject of pious meditation, it is a stronghold in times like the present one. In Fatima, she promised that the solution to all the problems of the present world, like atheism, persecution of the church, and many falling into hell, is consecration to her Immaculate Heart. As we commemorate the Immaculate Heart of Mary, let us entrust to Mary the whole world, the people who are atheists, who commit hate crimes, who walk in the ways of sin, and unite all our sufferings and pains to her Immaculate Heart for the love of Christ, earnestly desiring to have a love-filled heart like hers. With the Dominican Saint 
Louis de Montfort, let us also pray. Give us your heart, O Mary. Amen.